Good evening, and welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include Linkages Program, Visit to the Green Depot, Fire Department Issue Warning, These Stories Plus Community Events, the BBS Playbill, Off the Rack, and more coming up after this. Come for a good time and we'll sweep you off your feet with jigs and reels and festivals and the world's most friendly folk. Dance your cares away at the Kellegrew Soiree. Imagine that. On Wednesday of this week, we were invited to take part in the Linkages Program monthly session. Linkages is a 26-week work placement that is funded by the Human Resource and Employment and is sponsored and delivered by the BDDB. This is the second time the BDDB has been involved with the Linkages Program. The very first linkages was started in the mid-90s. The objective of the program is to link young people, sometimes with specific career goals, sometimes not, with local businesses or groups and organizations. This year there are four young people participating in the program that started on October the 7th and will finish on April the 4th. Adam Melbourne is one of these participants. Adam's career goal is to become a paramedic. His work experience with Sibley's Ambulance Service allows him to be directly involved in this field of work. Andy Courtney, another participant, has applied to Kona for the medical radiography program. His linkages placement is with the X-ray department at the Calder Health Care Center. The third linkages participant from Burgio is Linda Rhymes, and she would like to do skills training in the office administration computer field. While her job at placement at the Gillette's Motel is not directly career related, it does provide her with the opportunity to develop her communications and personal skills. Mike Denty is from Ramya and unfortunately was unable to attend this session due to the weather. Mike is placed with the town of Ramya. He is focusing on developing his employability skills and building his resume. We had an opportunity to speak to the young people. Each one stated that they are enjoying the Lincolnshire program very much and they highly recommend this program to any student. Teresa Peterson is the coordinator for the program. Teresa told us that in addition to work placement component, there are monthly sessions delivered to the Lincolnshire participants. Each session is designed to focus on three objectives, workplace adjustment, career planning, and connecting. For example, during the workplace adjustment session, Byrne Dallman from the Department of Labor in Cornerbrook did a session on employer-employee expectations in the workplace, along with issues regarding wages, hours of work, health and safety, termination, etc. Mr. Burton from Scotia Bank also came in and talked to them about budgeting their money and planning for their futures. When we visited on Wednesday, the participants were very busy working on an icebreaker. Before each session, Teresa will come up with an icebreaker that fits the session. This one fits into the Developing a Career Plan and is called Occupations of Present and Future. The participants had to decide what the occupations were. For example, what does an apiculturalist work at? This is a person who studies the culture and breeding of bees. Later in the career planning session, Jerry Bellard from the Employment Outreach Services talked to them about programs and services of his department and how they might affect the Lincolnshire participants. As well, counseling appointments will be set up with Mr. Bellard for each of them. During this session, Valerie Sims Anderson with the Community Youth Network was the motivational speaker. For the February session, plans are being made for the Linkages group to go to Ramia, weather permitting, of course. The program will finish on March the 19th with a short session, lunch, and presentation of certificates. As final wrap-up to the program, Linkages will partner with CYN for a tour of the colleges in Cornerbrook on March the 31st. If you have a student in school and they are ready to graduate, but don't really know what they want to do in a way of career, Parents should encourage their students to consider the Linkages program. Encourage them to find out how to get involved and what they have to do to qualify. It's the perfect program for a student who is not sure what they want to do after they leave school. 
This past week, the Green Depot in Newfoundland and Labrador has been celebrating its sixth anniversary. We dropped by Burgio's Green Depot to see how the recycling program in our community was doing. The Burgio Green Depot has been in operation for over five years. Since 1998, the Green Depot has seen a steady increase in the amount of recyclables that is being returned. We spoke to Melvin Bellard about why this might be. Mr. Bellard stated that the increase in the funds has certainly made a difference, and advertising has played a part in this increase as well. Mr. Bellard went on to say that most of the surrounding communities are also recycling. The Burgio Green Depot receives recyclables from Ramia, Gray River, Francois, and most recently, Rose Blanche. The depot is open usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the Burgio residents, and recyclables from other communities are taken on other days. This way, there is not too much congestion at the depot at one time. It seems that just before holidays like Christmas or Easter, for example, is the busiest time for the depot. Those who recycle is different as the communities that take part. For example, in Burgio, many individuals recycle and donate the proceeds to the Janeway or the Bright Sites. The school takes part as well as other organizations. In Ramia and Grey River and Francois, most of the recyclables are given to the schools. To celebrate the sixth anniversary, Burgio's Green Depot has opened for an extra day. And when you return your items for recycling during this past week, each person was given a pencil and a ruler and their name was entered into a draw for a chance to win t-shirts, water bottles, and other items. The Burgio Green Depot has no plans to expand the recycling to include items such as cardboard or newspapers because it is just too costly. Break. Mr. Biller told us they believe that approximately 80% of all recyclable items are returned to the depot, and this is very positive. Mr. Billard went on to say that with this percentage of return, it means our community is a much cleaner place and it is certainly noticeable around our streets. He also said that 50% of their customers sort their recyclables. He proudly mentioned the customer who sorts his pop cans in the case which they were bought. And then when they are brought to the depot, all the worker has to do is count the number of cases. This is very efficient and means that the customer doesn't have to wait long. To cut down on your time at the Green Depot, Mr. Biller suggests you sort your recyclables. Pop cans in one container, plastic bottles in another, glass bottles and juice containers in another. And don't forget to remove the stoppers. This makes it easier for the workers to count your items and you won't have a long wait. It would seem that with 80% of recyclable items being returned for refunds, Burgio indeed is into a green routine. Stay tuned for more of this week in review coming up after this. There's gannets and puffins, kittiwakes and myrrhs, guillemots, petrels and owls. And you can see where the eagle has landed. Imagine that. The Burgia Fire Department has issued a warning to homeowners about their clothes dryers. Most of you have probably seen the message on Community Channel 10 concerning this warning. The Burgio Fire Department received notice of this potential fire hazard with clothes dryers from the Ramya Fire Department. Dust particles or lint can build up in the back of some drawers around the eating element, causing it to get hot and catch fire. Residents are asked to please check for this by taking the back of your drawer. If you have an outside vent, check to see that it is not blocked by snow. If not vented properly, this can cause heat to build up and this is also a fire hazard. The Burgia Fire Department takes this opportunity to remind residents to check their own eating systems. The Anglican Church has plans to start a new youth group called the Trailblazers. After the Western Diocese increased the age of confirmation to 13 years old, many parents were concerned that after completing grade 5 Sunday school, there would be nothing to keep their children involved in the church until they became confirmed. This was a two-year gap. Because of this concern, the church went looking for a program for these young people. 
after doing some research and talking to other parishes, the Anglican Church decided to go with the Pioneer Club. This program has had great success in other communities. It is similar to the guiding movement and scout movement in that the different age groups go by different names. For example, in the guiding movement, sparks are aged five and six. With the Pioneer Club, grades five to grade seven, or ages 10 to 12, are called trailblazers. Of course, this program is Christian-based and will help develop Christian values and will impact the lives of young people. It is open to both boys and girls who are in grade five Sunday school this year and up to age of confirmation, or ages 10 to 12. The registration fee will be $6, and this will go towards resources for the program. Wednesday nights from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. has been chosen for the meeting night, but this is subject to change if it is not convenient for the members. Leaders are also in place for the group, and they are excited and ready to begin. This is an exciting program with activities in drama, music, crafts, and games. Young people will learn new skills for in first aid, woodworking, and art. And there are fun projects such as science exploration and experiments. There are outdoor activities like hiking and orienteering, and many, many more activities that young people will enjoy. Like the guiding and scout movements, young people will be able to earn award badges throughout the program. This program is ideal for those young people who have not reached the age requirement for confirmation. To register for the Trailblazers, please contact Rev. Reverend Russell at 886-2289 or Anna Dix at 886-2158 by Sunday, February the 9th. On Thursday of this week, work began on the roof of our new school. After having some problems in this area of construction, work has finally began again. We spoke to Jim Payne, site manager, and he told us that this roof had to be done before they could start with the ceiling inside the school. The roof, of course, has already been done with plywood and retardant, or better known as vapor barrier. These white sheets that are on the roof now is called DIN's stick. The next step are these sheets the workers are putting down, and this is called asphalt recover boards. This is similar to tar felt but it has fiber. This recover board is then nailed. workers are putting down the asphalt base sheets. They use heat torches to secure this to the recover board. This is a very shiny look. This will make the roof watertight.
final stage, which is called the cap sheet, and it is the same as shingles, only this has rot on it, will be put on in the spring when the weather is warmer. Stay with us for Off the Rack, the community events, and the BBS Playbill, all after this. It's a land with over 10,000 miles of coastline, thousands of inlets, coves, guts, and bays, a land that lives by the sea. No wonder our dogs have webbed feet. Imagine that. Off the Rack. This week, as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a tape of some of this year's grad class during a music class. Let's look back to February the 3rd, segment of tonight's broadcast. I'm Rebecca Young. The winner of the SJCH TV Bingo was Lucy Savory. Congratulations Lucy. The next scheduled TV Bingo will be hosted by the preschool on Wednesday, February 5th at 7 p.m. Cards are a dollar each or six or five dollars and are available from any parent with children registered in the preschool and are in most stores around town. Please support the preschool program Play a TV bingo, and you could win $300. The Burnets are selling tickets on a basket of towels. Tickets are a dollar each or three for $2. Draw date is set for Saturday, February 8th. Tickets are available from any Burnets member. Have you ordered your Valentine balloon yet? If not, you still have time and they only cost $1. To order, you may contact any member of the guiding movement or you may call Kim at 2209, Liz 2324, or Lisa at 2076. To order a balloon for your prayer partner, please call Grace at 886-2117. If your group or organization has an upcoming event planned, we would be happy to advertise it for you. Just call the BBS office by Wednesday of each week to have items included in this portion of our broadcast. That concludes the community event segment of tonight's broadcast. See you next week. BBS Playbill. Try your luck on Wednesday by playing Preschool TV Bingo. Join Pans and the Gang for two stories, a craft, and lots of fun on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on Pansy's Garden. Next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. we will have Religious Revelation from the United Church. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. For This Week in Review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.